How's it going, fam? It's Erica with Not Your Average EDC, and tonight we are going to talk about modern tool steels versus old school tool steels. This right here is a GEC Bullnose in 1095, and to a lot of people that is an old school steel. It's a tool steel, it patinas. Um, I really enjoy it, but you know, a lot, there aren't very many modern knives. Come on, focus. It's not gonna focus. There aren't many modern knives that use 1095, realistically. We're moving into things like Rex 45 and K390 and Maximit and M4. I don't know why we're not focusing tonight. Oh, come on. What the heck? Rex 45, for example. K390, we have more modern steels now. And I have been carrying this 1095 high carbon bull nose in conjunction with these two more modern steels. So I figured I would just give some thoughts about that um, and share my experiences so far. So first off, 1095 is way easier to maintain and sharpen very, very easy. Not that these are hard or anything to take care of, but they just take a little bit more time, right? So 1095 is really easy to maintain. And also I have noticed it's very easy to reprofile. So let's see if this will focus. So as you can see, this has a, a different edge on it than what it came with. Um, the bevel that this arrived with just did not work for me. And I almost feel like it wasn't, it like wasn't even real. <laughs> I don't know what, there was like the tiniest little, little bevel, like even smaller than this. I don't even know if, I don't know if you can see that. So this has like a very small bevel. This is a regrind. And this one had an even smaller one. It was like non-existent. So I'm almost wondering if it's one of those types of deals where you're supposed to put your own edge on it. Like some case knives come like that. They're just, they're expecting you to put your own edge on. So I did, I laid it back. I would figure three times wider than the original bevel. And um, this is just an, a razor blade now. I have a video kind of showing how sharp it is. But I laid it way back. And now it's slicing very, very well. But my whole point of that is that laying this edge back and reprofiling that freehand was actually very easy. Um, I did this on a Shapton Glassstone, a 120 grit, and moved all the way up to 8,000 and then went through a series of strops all the way to one micron. And this is kind of the edge that we came up with. But yeah, I did that freehand on some stones. I used um, the Shapton Glass 120, then a 325 600 DMT, then went to a 1000 Nanawa, back to 1200 DMT, back to 8000 Nanawa, and then a whole series of strops. And that's the edge that we came up with. But it was very easy. It was time consuming because I was literally recreating a brand new edge and trying to keep it even, uh, you know, freehand. So you just have to pay a little bit of attention when you're recreating, or not even recreating, when you're, when you're creating something brand new like that and you're trying to keep it uniform. It's just a little tricky to like hold your angle for four hours. But um, it was very easy to move this steel. It just was time, time consuming because we had to lay that edge back so far. But now she's a little razor blade. And I know for a fact that if I were to reprofile this Rex 45, it just would not take, um, it, it would take a lot more time. This is way harder. This is going to move way different to the point where I can't even use my normal strops with this. I actually have one that uh, Anthony sent over. It just got here today, so I'll be using that. But um, he uses the basswood or something um, with some compound on it. And I, I have to use that to strop this because my stuff just isn't cutting it. So 
there's just no way that this would be able to be reprofiled uh, that easily, I guess. K390, I think, would be a little bit easier. I think this is a little softer than the Rex 45. Or, or maybe not softer, but just um, I think it's I think it would be a little easier to work with. Just from my use so far, I feel like it would it would be easier. But um, you know, they're all tool steels. It, the hardness just changes, and the composition, chemically speaking, is different. But I will say, although this is old school and um, outdated to some people, and you know, they wouldn't even give. 1095 a second glance, I think it absolutely still has a place. I really do. Because if you are looking for the toothy, beautiful aspects of a tool steel, and you actually enjoy patina, which seems to be a thing now, people are actually enjoying it at this point. Um, if, you, if you like all of the aspects of tool steel, but you wanna actually be able to work with this with ease, 1095 really does hold an edge decently well, guys. I'm being serious. Like, I if it's treated well, it will hold an edge for a good amount of time. Um, you know, I I have used some pretty uh, soft. Sorry, let's just uh, move that a little bit. I've used some pretty soft tool steels. Don't get me wrong. I've used some uh, low treated 1075, and you know, um, SE knives have their own perks 100%. They're kind of meant to be soft, I believe, just so that they are very easy to fix in the field and to maintain and stuff. Um, and they're kind of more like hard use knives. But if you get a thin ground, well-treated 1095, I, I don't know, guys. I think it's a great EDC steel. I really like how easy it is to work with and it takes a toothy freaking edge. This is literally at one micron right now. And the amount of bite this has is absolutely ridiculous. And I have been using this, like I said, for a while. I mean, look at the blade. Jeez. It's, uh, it's got a good patina. It has been used a lot. It's, it's working fine, you know? Um, I, I know so many people that have said that Rex 45, they got it because it's a tool steel and they wanted the patina and they think it's cool and all that good edge retention stuff. But when you when you go to sharpen it and you're a novice, it's like, meh, it can be a little, a little spooky. So this video was kind of just to point out that, you know, th these new, the, the latest and greatest tool steels really do have a place. They're, they're awesome. Um, I am really enjoying testing these too. But if you, if you want to cover all of your bases and include sharpening in your hobby, I, I can't really crap on 1095 if it's done well. I can't because it, it's really phenomenal so, so far. Um, I think this looks great. And I think it would be very easy for people learning how to sharpen to work with this steel for real. I do know that these knives are a little tricky to obtain. The GEC models, I do know that. Um, this was sold to me from a friend. It's more like the, it's more like certain models are tough to obtain. Cause I don't know, I went on like 10 different sites today that the um, Great Eastern Cutlery website had for their official dealers and they had in stock knives. They had um, Coon Skinners. They had, uh, there were some other ones for sale. Like, are they expensive? Yeah, but that's just what you're gonna pay for something like this at this point. And um, I just got an email from one of those dealers that they're doing a drop tomorrow on some North Fields. So I, I think it's kind of one of those deals where you either have to get them on eBay or you have to sign up for the, the releases, we can call them. Uh, and that's how you pick these up because they're not like readily available through DLT or Blade HQ or anything. It's kind of the, these like mom and pop shops that you have to find online and then sign up for the releases or just take what they have in stock right now. But I will say I, I did not pay a lot for this. Um, a friend gave me a very good deal on this last year and 
just the quality is so above and beyond what we see from case knives. I have a whole history with case knives that I recorded on the channel, um, but I think this is absolutely a stunning piece of work and, and worth the money. Let's see if the camera will focus at all. So we have a perfectly centered blade. Every pin is flush and absolutely where it's supposed to be and beautiful. The spring is not even a speck proud. It is 100% smooth. The fit and finish of this is absolutely gorgeous. Just look at this, man. Are the prices inflated on the secondary? Yep. But everything is at this point. I think this is one of the most stunning knives I've ever seen in my life. And that, the action, guys. Like, the pull. Ooh, that is beautiful. This is, it's just not going anywhere. Like, the, that blade is not going anywhere, even though it's not a locking knife. It's substantial. The lockup is substantial. And then this half stop here, it's just very strong. I wish the camera would focus better. I'm so sorry, guys. Just so freaking strong. And even, like, the... There are just little details on this. There's like a little swedge that they did, but it starts um, kind of like right here. And it's just like this nice rounded spine. I, this camera's gonna drive me freaking nuts, I swear to God. It's just a beautiful, it's a beautiful blade. It's a beautifully done tool. I, I think that they're worth it. I know that they can go for upward of $300, depending on the model, but um, if you can get them, like, not inflated, these um, GEC Northwoods, um, they have, like, a few lines underneath them, I think. They're, they're very nice if you want to experience a traditional style knife. I'm really enjoying this so far. I'm very lucky that I got this, and especially for the price I did, and it was not used it was just sitting in a tube because these become collector's pieces. But look at that micarta. This one's polished. This micarta's polished, so it's really soft, like smooth. But this is just a beautiful tool. So if you can find out how to get some of those like traditional style GEC knives, they are definitely, definitely worth it. You can use them. They do cut, they take incredible edges, they hold them very well, they're very toothy, they're, they really are tools. Um, you, you really can use these if you want. And I think that they have an equal place in the EDC rotation right up there with the more modern tool steels that are you know coming out and being created. Uh, these are absolutely fabulous, but so is 1095 if done correctly. So I just kind of wanted to talk at you guys today about that, uh, share my thoughts about 1095. I, I've always enjoyed it, but this is really bringing a whole different experience that I haven't had before with 1095. I've never used something so thin and elegant and, w and well done before. So um, I really like that. And I do know that there were issues with, I think, this actual model having the spring be proud when you have the blade at a half stop. And I just wanted to show you guys that it's not like that. At least not anymore. Oh my gosh, this camera's gonna kill me. I hope that you guys can see that. There we go. It's not, it's not proud at all. So the, the blade is right there. And the spring is not popped up. It is still completely flush. So that issue has been fixed. Just so you guys know, if you're um, picky about that type of thing. So yeah, um, that's all I have for you guys today. I will see you on the next video. Go use your shit, learn how to sharpen your knives, and I will see you so soon. Love you all very much.